Yo, what's up, Swag Gang? You already know what time it is, man. It's your boy, Keon Lar, a.k.a. K.L. Swag. Back here with a video, man. Look, man, we about to react to 10 Super Bowls that everyone hated. We are back here again with another T.P.S. The single most exciting event all year in the world of sports. Or at least it's supposed to be. The final score again... The 49ers 55, the Denver Broncos 10. Damn! They got their ass with that damn bad back in the day. Fans absolutely hate a bad Super Bowl. So without further ado, let's take a look at 10 of the most hated Super Bowls of all time. Okay, First see. up, we have Super Bowl 24, which was played between the San Francisco 49ers and Denver Broncos right. back in 1990. Which I suppose is a pretty easy choice, considering it was one of the most lopsided Super Bowls we have ever seen. As evidenced by San Fran winning it 55-10, to 10, posting a 45-point margin of victory, the largest in Super Bowl history. It wasn't exactly the most shocking outcome, we'll admit. Despite both sides being the top seed in their conference and having a big-name quarterback leading the charge, Joe Montana for the Niners and John Elway for the Broncos, San Francisco was the heavy favorites coming into this game. The spread was nearly two touchdowns in most sports books at the time. Unfortunately, it got ugly for the Broncos and fast. And San Francisco jumped out to a 13-3 lead in the first quarter, helped by a Bobby Humphrey fumble that shifted the balance of power in the game completely. It was never were close from there on out. San Francisco went into the half up 27 to 3 and ultimately won 55 to 10, making it one of the least eventful Super Bowls we've ever seen. Coincidentally, this wasn't the only Broncos Super Bowl that fans hated. The next came in 2014 when Peyton Manning's Denver side squared up against the Seattle Seahawks led by the infamous Legion of Boom and a young oh, Russell Wilson at quarterback. Well, I remember that. Don't think that John Elway is getting off scot-free in Super Bowl 48 either because he was the general manager of the team and the executive vice president of football operations. And though he did eventually shake the choke artist label by quarterbacking two straight Super Bowl victories on his way into retirement, this was a nice regression to the norm, as the Broncos melted down in truly spectacular fashion. Oh my and gosh, by the way, it wasn't just the play on the field that everyone hated. That. The NFL also made an extremely questionable decision to let the Giants host the Super Bowl at their outdoor stadium in February, need I remind you. So, there was all sorts of stress leading up to the game about potential weather issues, but luckily Mother Nature showed some mercy. The same, however, cannot be said for the Seahawks, though, because this game was a no contest from the opening whistle. On the first offensive play of the game, the snap sailed past Manning into the back of the end zone for a safety, and from that point on, it was just all Seattle. All in all, it was one of the least entertaining Super Bowls we've seen, especially considering the fact that it was all but over from the first play on. Damn. I mean, the Broncos were just one of two teams in the preceding 30 years well, to be held to less than 10 points of the Super Bowl. Truly a dubious distinction. The Ravens-Giants Super Bowl in 2001 was none too popular in its own right either. Baltimore came to the game as a slight favorite around three points or so, but they absolutely smothered the Giants. New York totaled just 152 yards of total offense, the third Damn, lowest in Super Bowl sense. history, surrendering four sacks and five turnovers along the way. Every single Giants offensive possession ended with a punt or an interception, and their only score came in the third quarter on a kickoff return for a touchdown, once the Ravens were already up 17-0. And of course, Baltimore answered with a kickoff return of its own mere seconds later, further cementing the never-in-doubt status of this game. The Ravens ended up taking it by a final score of 34-7, with its starting quarterback, Trent Dilfer, only completing 12 passes for 152 yards. All in all, this is definitely one of the most boring Super Bowls. Interestingly, in the time since, we've actually seen two more Super Bowls in which one of the teams failed to eclipse the 10-point threshold. Super Bowl 53 in 2019 between the New England Patriots and Los Angeles Rams, and Super Bowl 55 between the Buccaneers and Chiefs in 2020. Unsurprisingly, the public was not exactly in 
enthralled with these Super Bowls. Wow. The latter between Tampa Bay and Kansas City was one of the most anticipated Super Bowls in recent memory. People saw it as a potential passing of the torch moment in which Tom Brady, who shocked everyone by leading the Bucks to the Super Bowl during his first season with the team, might bend the knee to Patrick though. Mahomes and a Chiefs team that was looking to form a little dynasty of their own. Unfortunately for the Chiefs, the Bucks defensive line had other plans, and they absolutely dominated the game. For the first time, I mean, oh my gosh. Patrick Mahomes did not know what to do. Tired of changing dressings? Maybe it's time to it change so dressings. Damn bad. Discover a leave-in life foam dressings. In the Patrick Mahomes era, the Chiefs failed to score a touchdown in a full game. This also marked the Chiefs' first double-digit loss in the Mahomes era, which in and of itself is a pretty insane statistic. Although the storylines around Brady winning the big one during his first season after his split with Bill Belichick were compelling, the game itself was not particularly entertaining. Besides, it isn't like there were all that many people sitting around hoping that Tom Brady would win another Super Bowl. This was a pretty miserable viewing experience for anyone who wasn't a lifelong Tom Brady jock rider or a Bucks better. Super Bowl 53, which coincidentally involved Tom Brady as well, was actually a pretty close game deep into the fourth quarter, but my lord, was it boring. This one was particularly disappointing to the public, not just because Brady and Belichick captured their sixth Super Bowl together, but also because the Rams were one of the most prolific offenses in the league that season, which made it all the more shocking that they had laid a complete egg during the biggest game of the year. Ugh. Leave it to Bill Belichick to find a way to completely shut down one of the best offenses that the NFL had seen in recent years. Leaving all the NFL fans at home stewing in disappointment for having to watch such an excruciatingly unentertaining game. Although the point totals were slightly higher, Super Bowl 40 in 2006 between the Steelers and Seahawks and Super Bowl 8 way back in 1974 between the Dolphins and Vikings were two Super Bowls that bored fans into hating them as well. This matchup featured a Seahawks team that was one of the best teams in the league all season under Mike Holmgren. The team started the season 2-2 two two before rattling off 11 straight regular season wins and two playoff dubs to get to the big game. The Steelers, however, were favored by a little over a field goal despite making it to the Super Bowl as an 11 and 5 6 seed. The public sentiment, on the other hand, favored Seattle. It was the franchise's first ever Super Bowl appearance, and let's face it, no one yeah. really needed to see the Steelers win yet another Super Bowl. Unfortunately, we did not get our wish, as Pittsburgh won a snooze fest of a game. Largely thanks to a couple of key controversial calls by head official Bill Levy. And before anyone starts claiming sour grapes, Levy himself has even admitted it. It was a tough thing for me, Levy said. I kicked two calls in the fourth quarter and I impacted the game and as an official, you never want to do that. It left me with a lot of sleepless nights, and I think about it constantly. I'll go to my grave wishing that I'd been better. Yeah, Bill, so do we. And we wish that game itself was better, too. Super Bowl VIII, on the other hand, wasn't as ripe with controversy, but it was still a real stinker of a game. The only real intrigue was that the Dolphins were looking to repeat as champions, making them just the second team to do so in NFL history to that point. But much of the excitement was zapped in comparison to the previous year's Is championship back, because that thing? was their legendary 17-0 undefeated season. And while the Dolphins, Dolphins never, did Dolphins deliver, they did cool. so in a drag-out fashion, scoring Dolphins two touchdowns in the first quarter and essentially squeezing the rest of the life out of the Vikings for the remaining 45 minutes of gameplay. Miami just ran and ran and ran. And the game was never in doubt. The Finns cruised to a 24-7 victory despite only having thrown the ball seven times, which is insane. Next up, we have Super Bowl 37 between John Gruden's Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Bill Callahan's Oakland Raiders. Though there has to be a little bit of an asterisk on Callahan's Raiders because Gruden had coached the Raiders from 98 until 2001 before the team traded him to Tampa Bay. In Damn. fact, the Raiders were still considered Gruden's team to the point that people, including players on the team itself, speculated that yeah, Callahan Gruden, might have turned the game for his mentor. We went back to the offense that Gruden knew. So the audibles that was that. So oh my God, Jim. Black 15 Lightning taps in. They're coming right here. 
The rumor stemmed from his decision to completely flip the game plan on its head. The way you prepare all week long, you go with it, no matter what. We just felt like it was very unusual for him to make that change. Going from a run-heavy attack to an aerial game plan just days before the big game. We had changed the offense to, to, to be more run dominant. Friday morning, Bill Callahan comes in and says what to you guys? We're going to go back to the offense we had all year. While it may never be proven for sure yeah, that Callahan in intentionally sabotaged his own team on the world's biggest stage, he did play his part in putting together a Super Bowl that everyone hated to watch. Tampa smoked Oakland and largely kept their highly ranked offense at bay as the Raiders had just nine points until the fourth quarter before tacking on another 12 once the game was completely out of hand. Rank just not a fun game to watch. Lastly, we have two back-to-back -back Super Bowls between the same two teams. In 93 and 94, the Cowboys and Bills squared off in two of the say, worst Super Bowls that we have ever seen. If these games sound familiar, by the way, it's because they were the finale of Buffalo's legendary four Super Bowl losing streak. But the outcome of the game wasn't the only reason we hated watching this Super Bowl either. The action on the gridiron left a lot to be desired in its own right, because Damn. these games were never even close. Oh! Dallas oh. blew Buffalo's doors off both years, 52 to 17, then 30 to 13. Not exactly what you want to see as a uninvested fan looking for some competitive action to close out the season. But which Super Bowl did you hate watching the most? Did we miss? I ain't gonna lie, all the Super Bowls sounded good to me, to be honest, but y'all let me know down below in the comments, man. Stay so though.